Hello, I'm David Hughes. Welcome to Your Perfect Body, the podcast of the esoteric teaching community. Today's selection is an essay entitled Comparative Ontologies. We use the term ontology in the sense of a collection of stories about the universe, life, and everything that we use to explain how things work and to make decisions. Our ontology determines our consciousness in that it gives us a collection of viewpoints, values, and structural connections between and among the various parts of our experience. Since consciousness, as we have discussed elaborately on this podcast, consists of experience and meaning, the more viewpoints and connections our ontology provides, the richer and more evolved our consciousness becomes. One's ontology, or philosophical frame of reference, predictably influences one's opinions, feelings, actions, and ultimately one's spiritual destination in the next life. Although ontology is such an important aspect of life, very few people have ever heard the word or know what it means. Still fewer have any experience in analyzing the comparative merits of different ontologies and the range of spiritual viewpoints, values, experiences and destinations they offer to those who adopt them. Earlier on this podcast, we compared one's ontology to a computer operating system, offering a variety of different functions and services to the mind and intelligence. Adherents of different computer operating systems hold intense debates comparing their features and merits. If we want to understand the differences among various ontologies available to us, we should do something very similar. Why? Choosing an ontology is perhaps the most important decision a person can make, because in a very direct way, this choice determines one's range of conscious experience and spiritual destinations. Our commitment to a particular ontology determines our social status and environment, earning potential, degree of understanding of life, and ultimately, what kind of situation we can expect to achieve in the next life. So it makes sense to expend some effort evaluating different ontologies to determine their comparative features and value. There are four categories of ontologies that serve as platforms for consciousness. These are the sensory or bodily platform, the mental platform, the intellectual platform, and the spiritual platform. Indriyani paranyahur, indriye bhya parang manaha, manasas tu para budhir, yo budhe paratas tu sa. The working senses are superior to dull matter. Mind is higher than the senses. Intelligence is still higher than the mind. And he, the soul, is even higher than the intelligence. Bhagavad Gita 342. In this shloka, Krishna gives us a classification of the ontological platforms in increasing order of value. This provides a basis for evaluating the comparative qualities of the different ontologies. Let us begin by examining the gross materialistic ontology. This ontology goes something like this. The self is the material body. We just have this one life to live. So let us live it with all the gusto we can muster. Sense gratification is the principal aim of life, and sex is the measure of our success in life. We have to fight to get what we want in life, therefore force is the solution to all problems. There is no God in control, so life is what we make of it. Life is a competitive game, and the one who dies with the most power and wealth is the winner. There is no afterlife, So it doesn't matter if we have to commit sinful activities, as long as we can get away with them. Winning isn't everything. It's the only thing. So that's the material ontology. Animals also think like this. Their aim is the satisfaction of their own senses, 
the acquisition of mates, territory, and so on. Animals do not have religion, philosophy, or ethics, so there is no substantial difference between a human being on the materialistic platform of consciousness and an animal. It is stated in the esoteric teaching, Yasyatma buddhi kuna pe tridhatuke, svadhi kalatri dishubhoma ijyadhi, yat tirta buddhi shalile nakarhi chij, janeshva bigyeshu sa eva gokharaha. A human being who identifies this body made of three elements with his self, who considers the byproducts of the body to be his kinsmen, who considers the land of birth worshipable, and who goes to a place of pilgrimage simply to take bath rather than meet men of transcendental knowledge there, is to be considered no better than an ass or a cow. Srimad Bhagavatam 10.84.13 Therefore, one who is on the materialistic ontological platform is heading for an animal birth, for his consciousness is basically indistinguishable from that of an animal's. Next is the mental ontological platform. This ontology goes something like this. I like this and I dislike that. This is a good idea and that is a bad idea. I love this person and hate that one. At least that's my opinion this week. Next week, who knows? My philosophy, church or religion is the only true way and all others are blasphemous nonsense. I am very clever and you are stupid. But I will never tell you this unless you catch me in a really good mood. After all, you don't deserve to know. The only way to get ahead is to get insider information by hook or by crook. You snooze, you lose. The mental platform is unstable because it is completely subjective, based on personal whims, moods, opinions, likes and dislikes, acceptance and rejection by the mind. There is no objective basis for evaluating anything. Everyone's opinion is as good as everyone else's. One who is on the mental ontological platform has many opinions, pro and con, but they are not fixed. As circumstances change, so does his mind. Thus, he cannot find peace. The person on the mental platform is better than one on the gross physical platform, because at least he thinks, after a fashion. This qualifies him to take a human birth in the next life, although not a very advanced one. Next, let's examine the intellectual platform. This ontology goes something like this. All the problems of life are solvable by knowledge, reason, and empirical research. Therefore, by advancement of material knowledge, we will eventually become immortal and completely free from disease. My theory describes the illusory perceptions of the human mind and how to attain cosmic consciousness. It is a completely original work that transcends the misunderstandings of all other systems, especially the superstitious religions of the ancient past. I am making great progress in my understanding of spiritual reality, and very soon, through my patented meditation technique, I shall merge with God and become the supreme enjoyer and controller. The person on the intellectual platform is far better situated than the others, because at least he knows that perfection is attained by the perfection of knowledge, and that religion is a personal process of transformation of consciousness. However, he is still addicted to philosophical speculation or subtle sense gratification, and refuses to accept a bona fide guru for real advancement of spiritual life, because he proudly thinks that he can figure out everything by himself. Still, a person on the intellectual platform is on the path of gradual advancement, and someday, when he gains the good fortune of association with a pure devotee of the Lord, he can become a very good devotee. Therefore, people on the intellectual ontological platform qualify for rebirth in higher planets or in families where advanced spiritual knowledge and association are available. Finally, we have the transcendental spiritual ontology, which goes something like this. The spiritual world exists eternally, without beginning or end. 
In the spiritual sky, an uncountable number of spiritual planets emanate from the transcendental body of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. An unlimited number of spiritual living entities also emanate from Him, and He maintains wonderful, ecstatic, loving relationships with all of them.